Hello, Star Trek fans, and welcome to the Rebinge Deep Space Nine podcast. My name is Kim. And my name is James. And we're watching Star Trek Deep Space Nine from the beginning, one episode at a time. So maybe you've already noticed that this isn't a normal episode because it's not as long as our episodes are. And that's because we're not going to walk through this one, one scene at a time. What I'm talking about is season three, episode 23, this episode entitled Family Business. It first aired May 15th, 1995. I actually found this one to be particularly difficult to watch because of its treatment of women. And I don't want to highlight that nonsense. And I categorically refuse to rebroadcast the things that I find so totally objectionable. But also, we don't want to bash this show. That's not why we started this podcast. It's not why we're watching it together. We're not haters. In general, I've enjoyed this process and seeing what James has loved about this series has been fun for me. And I think we've had a good time doing it. You know, we've made fun of the show in places, of course, but that's part of the fun of watching something with another person is you can laugh at the absurdity of it and you can also enjoy the great things of it together. But we don't want to spend, at least I don't want to spend, I don't want to speak for James. I don't want to spend 90 minutes of my life complaining about this episode. I don't think that would be fun. I don't think it would be fun for me and I don't think it would be fun for anybody who's listening. So you can make your choice from here of whether or not you want to listen to the rest of this episode, uh, or if you just want to move to the next one, to season three, episode 24, you can do that too. That's up to you from here. But I am going to make my point of what I didn't like about the episode. And like I said, we're not going to walk through it in detail, but I am going to make my point and you can decide if you want to listen to it. And as Kim is the newcomer to the show, I'm going to let her basically take over this one because it's her perspective <laughs> as the person watching this show for the first time. So I do want to talk, I guess, a little bit about what happens in the episode just to make sure that we're not missing any plot points. And then, you know, I'll make my case about the problems that I saw and James can make his case if he wants to about problems that he saw. And then we're just going to move on to the next episode next week. This wasn't a super easy decision, but this is what we've decided to do. So in this episode, we find that Quark's mother, uh, who is still living on the Ferengi homeworld, that she's doing the unthinkable and she's wearing clothes and she's trying to forge a life of her own where she's not dependent upon Quark sending her money. We learn that she's always been the one who's had the head for business. It was not Quark and Rom's father. It was actually her. But now she has to hide what she's doing because their father is gone and she's living on her own. And apparently it's illegal for females to make profit and to wear clothes or to leave their houses under the threat of indentured servitude. It's kind of ridiculous to say that indentured servitude would actually be better than this. It's not that different from what's described here or from what's allowed for women. The most upsetting part to me might be the clothes. This is the most submissive thing to me as part of this. I don't even know what to call it. I don't want to call it a story, but as part of this narrative, the fact that the women are stripped literally bare of all defenses, of all dignity to present whatever image they might want to present. And this would be fine if everyone had to do it, but everyone doesn't have to do it. Only the females have to do it. In this episode, a grown man places his head in the lap of his naked mother. There are so many things wrong with this scene and this image that it's, it was difficult to watch. And then on top of all of this, she's not even allowed to speak to anyone other than her family members. So they take away her clothes, her agency, and even her voice. And in the end, she submits to this entire process. Yes, she complains about it. And yes, she's proven to be smarter, supposedly, you know, than a woman is supposed to be, or than these guys are. That is true. But she still submits to this process because she really has no choice. And it's supposed to be okay for the viewer because it was somehow her decision. These are not decisions when the person has no power. They are submissions. The power remains lost. The humanity remains squashed. It's actually quite horrid to even think about that a person would be in this kind of a position. The show keeps trying to convince me that women in these situations are happy with it, so I should be okay with it. That feeds a narrative that harassers like to have, which is that if the woman would just see that it's no big deal or it's a joke, you know, it's funny, everything would be fine. We had this conversation before, back in an episode where Jadzia inexplicably defended the Ferengi. And at the end of that, both of us, not just me, but both of us said, wow, 
that's somebody trying to convince me that this behavior is okay. And it, it just isn't okay. You know, the show has been over for like 20 some years, 22, 23 years, something like that. And my lack of watching it makes no difference anymore. It's not going to get canceled. It's already over. Hundreds of people were employed by the show. They made a living. They probably built very successful careers from it. But in watching this episode was feeling like a crisis of conscience to me, because if I had watched this in real time, I would have never watched another episode of the show. It maybe would have soured me completely from Star Trek, which is a real shame because it's a thing that I love and continue to love. I love the things that aired before this. I love the things that aired after this. I love the new things that are continuing to air. And this seriously could have jeopardized an entire part of my life. That's how horrible it is. It's very difficult for me to just set that aside and just say, oh, you know what? It's, I didn't get the joke. It wasn't for me. It was for someone else because it's just so much more than that. It's just so much bigger. It's so much more insulting. And it's so hard for me to just say it's okay to take all agency away from a female character because she says it's okay. It's just awful. And I was talking to a friend of mine through text this morning about it, trying to figure out what I was going to say when we got onto this recording. And the word I just kept using over and over was horrible. It's just, it's just horrible. And it gives me a really awful feeling. So that's all I'm going to say about this episode. I'm never going to bring it up again. I'm going to give it a thumbs down, obviously, on the list of ratings, but I'm not going to talk about it again. We're not going to talk next week about what was wrong with this episode. We're not going to. I'm just going to move on to the next one. And that's all I have to say. Okay, well, I think that wraps it up for this very short episode and Kim's perspective. You don't have anything to say about it? There are things I could say about it, but I think I would just bang on it of going... I remember yeah. watching this episode originally and just having the same reaction then as I did now, which is ultimately she surrendered at the end. It didn't matter whether she was a smart female, whether she was exactly. the real breadwinner in the family and kept the family together, etc. She was basically forced to capitulate. And once again, we saw the norms of the society being reinforced because the people who should be supporting her failing to confront the flaws in their society, and even worse, not seeing them as flaws in their society. Right. So this was a bad episode, both I would say in terms of Star Trek, and also in terms of, I feel some of the people involved in the writing might need to deal with their Oedipus complex within here. <laughs> yeah, there were elements of it I just found creepy, and I don't Agreed. know whether that was deliberate for the shock value, but it felt more creepy as in, are you letting things about your personality seep into the show? Agreed. It was hard to watch. There was a person once who tried to explain to me that Deep Space Nine's treatment of women was actually better in the Star Trek world than Voyager and Next Gen because the women characters didn't have to wear sexy outfits. And while I agree the sexy outfits are problematic, this is so much worse. This is so much worse. Anything else? I think I made my points on it, which is it has no progress. Agreed. And we're not going to bash on it anymore. I had a fleeting thought about actually giving up this podcast completely and stopping watching the show because I found it so upsetting. But I don't want to do that. I want to continue to enjoy the things that I'm enjoying. And that's what we're going to do. Okay. Okay. I think that wraps up episode 23. Come back next week for episode 24, where hopefully we can actually do a normal episode. Thanks for joining us on the Rebinge Deep Space Nine, the problem episode. That's it for me. And that's it from me. <laughs> <laughs>